Really quick before we get into this episode, I did want to do a little trigger warning because we are going to be talking about Rosemary and the procedure that she had done. So if you have a weak stomach or you have medical trauma, skip this one and we'll see you in the next. This is KFM 4, part one. Bethany and I have talked about this in depth and at length, and I've actually changed my opinion on a lot of what I think went down and a a lot of what I think the Kennedy's motives were since recording the episode. So if you think you know what happened, you don't. We need to talk about the Kennedy siblings. Episode four. Welcome to Blood and Business. I'm Bethany. And I'm Cassie. It has taken Cassie and I months of knowing what went on to piece together what we actually think went down with the family, with the siblings, with Rosemary herself. And it's all written in between the lines, but you have to read between the lines. You have to really put yourself in 1941, and that's hard to do. So we're going to like lay it all out for you, give you our roadmap of what we've come to. And basically the two different scenarios that it comes down to and the one that we primarily think is what happened after really researching and spending over a year and a half investigating these siblings, this family dynamic, and the ins and outs of this time in history. So let's lay out the facts for you. We'll start there and build our quote unquote case because obviously we have to start with the truth. This actually has been a really fun experience for me, just specifically episode four, because it just reminds me the truth will find you out. Like if you dig deep enough, the truth will unfold. Throw out the opinions, throw out the rumors. Let me read this sentence word for word and think about what this actual sentence says. The simplest answer is most often the right answer. And that is true. We believe with Rosemary. Okay, let's jump into Rosemary and her lobotomy. What do we know from episode four? Less than 100 people had gone through the surgery in total. It was less than three years old, and her doctors specifically had done around 80 of those procedures. So what does that tell us? First, it's a pretty new surgery. Not only did Joe Kennedy not know what to expect from this surgery, Clearly, if less than 100 people in the world have ever gone through this surgery, nobody knows what to expect from this surgery. It is impossible. When Bethany and I were listening to the episode four back yesterday to kind of like, okay, let's go back again and re-digest, re-discuss. I heard that stat and I was thinking, Okay, Rosemary's doctors had done few than, fewer than 100 surgeries. Okay, that makes sense. The surgery's super new. And so I was just listening to the episode and I was like, okay, going on. And I was not going to stop there. And but then he's like, write that down. And I'm like, write what down? That's not even a big deal. She's like, less than 100 people have ever had a lobotomy before Rosemary. And I'm like, no, her doctors had only performed 100. She was like, no, listen to what you said. I can <laughs> go back. It was so impossible to me for that small of a number to be true that I didn't even register. I just like corrected it in my brain as her doctors. Mm -hmm. No. In the world ever. Yeah. Less than a hundred in the world. By knowing that and understanding that and then you put that into like a sociocultural context, nobody knew what a lobotomy was. And I asked Cassie if they even called it that. Like what was the term lobotomy even used to like it was it slang? Was it what the doctors called it? Was this term invented like later on down the road? And Cassie said that Rose and Joe both only really call it a brain surgery. A, a certain type of neurosurgery. A certain type of neurosurgery. A lobotomy was not, and we talked about this in KFM3, a lobotomy was not what we know it as today. It was not some like true crime, scary, nurse ratchet type of Vision. Yeah. What does that tell us? That tells us that Joe Kennedy had no freaking idea what a lobotomy was because nobody in the entire world alive at that time 
knew what a lobotomy was besides her doctors who were very dishonest in their communication with the families and in their reports. Yeah, and kind of promised way more than would actually be delivered. It's not even way very skewed. Yes. It was like not even true. It was a total misrepresentation, I think, of the of the results of the surgeries. So In my mind, I'm like, okay, well, then that means that Joe did not just send his daughter to the slaughter like everyone acts like he made a mistake and trusted the wrong people. He took a huge risk that he shouldn't have taken, but he didn't know. Okay, I'm going to just like end the what is it? What did he say? Close the case on Rosemary. I hate that quote. I I don't I think that's taken out of context because. I he wouldn't have even had the information to know her life is over after this. He he wouldn't have known that. Correct. That's so for sure. That wasn't the case. Another fact that we know, Rosemary's lobotomy obviously went very, very wrong because her nurse, the nurse that was in the surgery with her, completely walked away from her career after Rosemary's surgery. So what does that fact tell me? The nurse does this for a living, right? She's been in several of these surgeries before. She's probably worked for these doctors for the entirety of this surgery's life because Because it was less than three years. Yeah, it was less than three years. They performed 80 of these. This is probably the nurse that works with them closely. That's probably not her very first experience ever with the the lobotomy. The odds of that being her first ever is not very likely. Okay, so for her to decide after this not to walk away from lobotomies, to walk away from the medical field entirely and being a nurse entirely. Her entire belief system shattered. Her entire she picture knew. of her future shattered after what happened with Rosemary. I feel like at that point she knew, I came into this to help people and the, and I'm not helping people. We also know through the quotes that Cassie had in episode four that within a few hours of starting Rosemary's procedure, the doctors were aware that it went wrong and that the outcome was not going to be good and not going to be what Rosemary's parents had envisioned or expected or were promised. So that also tells us that this was not only a bad surgery and a bad practice, but Within it being a bad surgery, it went even worse. So it was like just like layers of like crap going wrong and almost the stars aligning in a really bad way. So within knowing all of that, I don't even think it was a freak accident, which is kind of what I thought like beforehand. It was just unethical practice and doctors having fun experimenting. Yeah, this is obviously at the time period in America and the world that a lot of scientists and doctors are doing. They're getting high on their power and I don't know if this is like the time period where we're starting to know enough to where doctors are like oh we know enough to where we can figure stuff out or we have the tools or something but it starts to like completely spiral with secret studies on humans and psychology studies medical procedure studies the freaking Nazis were performing all kinds of experiments on their prisoners yeah And it just was like a a time period with very little moral accountability. Yeah. Yeah. There hadn't been enough botched surgeries done for people to know, oh, this is bad news. This is super risky. The medical community right now is out of control. Yeah. Basically, like the, the only accurate information that they had was when they asked Kick to. Yeah. And talk well, to a reporter. Okay, let's talk about that too. Yeah, go ahead. We know that Rose, and this is like like basically proven as fact yeah. that this did happen. Rose asked Kick because she was working in Washington, D.C., and she knew a lot of reporters and journalists and stuff. So Rose asked Kick to ask around about if people had heard anything about this new surgery. Kick talked to a journalist friend, and she knew that he had been doing a story about the hospital that does the lobotomies and what would eventually be Rosemary's hospital. And he had gone and like observed basically what a lobotomy was and if it was going to be this new groundbreaking miracle, yeah, yeah, miraculous surgery, or if it was 
too risky and not something that they wanted for their sibling slash daughter. And Kick basically said, no, this is nothing that we want for Rosie. Which sounds like, okay, then point blank case closed. The parents knew it was going to be bad news. They knew that they were chopping half of her brain out and went ahead and did it anyways. Yeah. But don't think about what we know in hindsight and then apply it to that story because then it's just obviously evidence. And then you're like, okay, there's evidence of the crime because we already know a crime has been committed. But if you think about it, If you went to a doctor today and asked for advice, they really, really, really recommended this treatment. Who are you going to believe? The journalist reporter who wants wants to have a good story in his newspaper that's super juicy and you know how media works? Or do you trust the doctors, the medical professionals who are telling you this is the only option for your daughter? She needs help. And we have an answer. And you have the perspective that you've got to freaking do something because every single day you're seeing your daughter in massive amounts of pain. Rosemary was having violent outbursts. outbursts. She was having seizures every day. People don't punch people in the face and bite people and pull people's hair out because they're happy. And perfectly fine. And everything is normal with them. She was obviously suffering. Yeah, she was frustrated. She was confused. She felt trapped. So we have all the facts of what happened with the lobotomy. Let's backtrack and think about the beginning of Rosemary's life, what the family dynamic was around Rosemary, because you can't just look at this isolated event and think you know what their family felt about Rosemary. That's not how life works. You have to have the context. The previous 22 years of Rosemary's life. Yeah. In KFM 3, we talked about how I came into this thinking, oh, Rosemary's the hidden Kennedy child. She was always that way. They never brought her out in public. They didn't introduce her to their friends. She was shut away. And that was that as soon as they knew about her disabilities. Yeah. But that's not the reality. So we know that they took her out in public all the time. They took really good care of her. She loved and adored her family. Okay, that makes me think, no, she wasn't just thrown away at 23 years old randomly. I think from every everything else that we know about the Kennedys, we know that Joe loved his children and he loved to solve their problems. He loved to help them and like come alongside them. That was like one of his greatest joys in life. Mm-hmm. And he was having to watch his daughter in so much physical, mental, emotional pain every single day. And, and we know that had- that started at age like 21. And so it had been over a year of that before the lobotomy. Also, before all of that, they had tried every form of care that they could think of or had access to what even existed back then. They had her at different Catholic schools, different boarding schools, private schools, home schools, camps. They literally tried everything that they could think of. Which makes you go into the meeting with the doctor when he's saying there is no other option. This is the only answer for your daughter. You and we've tend done to believe. This. We've done this over 80 times and it has been super successful. Our patients come out much more calm mm-hmm. and less stressed, less worried. They don't have outbursts anymore. Nobody in a normal situation would have taken such a risk. The only reason you take such a risk is when you're desperate. Yeah, it's like that quote from Pope Francis about refugees. He said that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. It was a coin toss either way almost. Like, basically, they had to make a decision. They had to do something, first of all. Because if they didn't, it would be neglect. It would be abuse. She is escaping from every care facility that you're putting her in. At 2 o'clock in the morning. Violently assaulting everyone that you care about and that she cares about every single day. Which puts her in even more distress, even more pain. She could have been, uh, trigger warning, she could have been raped as she's walking the streets of Boston at 2 a.m. She could have been kidnapped. She could have been killed. She could have been... She could have gone to prison. She could have, that's what I was going to say, she could have gotten in an, an altercation. There are so many people with mental disabilities, disorders, and untreated and sometimes unrecognized... Oh, mental illness. That's yeah. That's in prison. Mental yeah, illness in sure. prison all the time and they shouldn't be there not doing something is not an option. Right. And it's just, what do you do? And I've thought, okay, would I, like, would I do that? I don't think I I would have, but but I'm like, what is the, what is the other option? 
I would hire like because okay, I've got all the money he, in the world. I would hire, hire five five private aides that would keep her locked in some like like a padded cell type thing. But then you're basically signing other people up to abuse your kid, which is like traumatizing for them to freaking. I mean, it's hard to work with behavioral issues, obviously, but they didn't have like the right training back then, the right knowledge. So what are they doing? They're just like strong arming this kid or just allowing them to have these outbursts alone in a padded room. That's what my first thing was. Okay, that's another option. But then I'm like, but what that is so traumatizing is yeah. and like actual abuse as well. Like first you of all, can't lock a, your 20 year old kid in a freaking padded set. Like that's not okay. I would think, okay, can I ride this out? Can can my kid ride this out for a few years and then she'll calm back down after her hormones level out? But how long does that take? At least like four or five years. I don't know what, like those are just the things that would be running through my mind, I think. You would be looking for all the different options. I just think that it's different when you're in the actual situation where you have to make a decision like that because it sounds so cut and dry and black and white from an outsider perspective but when you're in it whenever you're watching your daughter every single day there's this like anxiety panic of I have to do something you know yeah, what I'm saying? like we can't I can't let her go one more day like this that's as a as a parent, yeah, you want to fix that problem, and you're like, how many more days can she handle yeah, this? How you many care more days for can her, I handle this? and you feel like you're not doing anything about it. Like she clearly has a problem, and you're not helping her. Which that group brings up a good point of the the different type of personalities people have and responses to anxiety and and to stress. And are you someone who like springs into act into action, and your initial instinct is like, I'm going to fix this problem. That's how Joe was for sure. He was, he did over function in anxiety, in stress. He was a problem solver at heart. And Rose was sort of the under functioning anxious person. So she would be more likely to like, just hands off. I don't know what to do. I'm paralyzed. And Joe would- and allow somebody else to make a decision for her, mm-hmm. which would either be Joe or medical professionals Mm -hmm. which kind of she did do that yeah basically happened she went to medical professionals with joe had meetings they gave them advice and rose basically just didn't participate in the rest of it joe made the decision Mm -hmm. is what it sounds like yeah we obviously don't know that for sure but yeah but i i could see her almost by not making a decision like forcing joe to make this decision yeah. himself cuz he's like something has to be done kind of abandoning you, him in yeah. that in that issue in that problem and i definitely know that we've been at times in our lives where we're like i would literally do anything to solve this problem we can do anything we can move anywhere yeah. we can change jobs we can screw being in tons of debt, screw like being, whatever, yeah, whatever needs to happen. It's every all bets that I ever thought I cared about are off. Uh-huh. The The only time you would make a decision like that if the is if the pressure is unsurmountable. Mm-hmm. And in like psychology classes and sociology classes, they do like those moral dilemmas, ethical dilemma, like questions of what would you do in this scenario? As you're saying this, everyone remember Joe's talking about a lobotomy, a brain surgery, not causing his daughter to be catatonic. That's not, he doesn't know that that's going to happen. Cause I feel like we're going to like moral dilemma. What would you do? Would you right. take someone out of their misery or would you not? But that's not what he thought he was uh-uh. doing. So go ahead. Yeah. They ask ethical problems. The famous one is like the, the train. Okay. There are a hundred people in a train um, and it's coming and it's going to crash and you can pull the lever, but it kills one person that's on the tracks and you save the hundred people or you do nothing and that one person lives, but a hundred people die. You have the power to save the 100 to, and sacrifice the one. What would you do? Do you overwork and you you decide for yourself it's better to save a hundred and, and have to sacrifice that one? Or do you completely hands off? You don't do anything, but by not doing anything, you're making a decision to... Because the train is moving. Yes. The train is already in motion and that's the thing. Yeah. So the there's train that, was and already in motion and... It was coming to a head. Like yes. something... You don't do anything and, and it just blows up on its own. But by as a parent, you're like, is that neglect? Or you do something and you flip the coin of, is this going to help? And is this going to be the miracle that we've been praying for since the beginning? Or am I sacrificing and am I risking everything by doing this? 
it's just so not as cut and dry no, as I think and people like people just paint it as like that's so horrible how could you do that to her and I, and I don't think they did that to her I don't think they did I think they were trying to take care of her mm -hmm. they were working with the hand that they were dealt and I think that any loved one but especially like if you're legally and like morally responsible for this person whether you're their caretaker or you're their parent and you've been in similar situations I really don't think that anyone knows what their answer would be until they're in it I don't know it's it is just so complex and so gray and it it's doesn't so complex, feel, but and you feel like oh I I fully know what I would do I wouldn't I wouldn't choose x y and z I would never and then you're in that situation and the pain and the hurt of your sister of your daughter is right in front of you in your face every day if you have never been in a situation where you have had to make a scary decision for a loved one then count your blessings because that is obviously not a situation anyone wants to be ever in. nobody wants life or death matters like yeah. in their face and, and you don't want to be the dictator no and that's why it's so unfair to cast such judgment, such black and white judgment because n nobody in that situation would ever want to be in that situation. Joe Kennedy didn't go out for fun one weekend to have his daughter lobotomize. Like, it's just not so simple. Even though it seems so clear to us that like, why in the crud would you do that? Hindsight is twenty twenty, And we can't even put, we just on an actual factual basis we cannot put ourselves in the situation that like we can't put ourselves in the mindset that they were in because we know too much already i feel like the more we go over the episode and over and over and over the information and the quotes and the events that we know happened and the information that we know that they had and i'm like they wouldn't have known okay i will go back to that one quote that one quote from Joe Close sounds to, really yeah. freaking like extreme. Yeah. And suspicious. But we don't know, Joe. We don't know exactly what they were thinking. I don't even know no if that sounds selfish, actually. I don't I don't even know if that sounds selfish. It could. Because it, it definitely could. But it could also sound like it would almost be better to just close the case as in it would almost be better for Rosemary to just not feel anything anymore. Yeah, it could it could be that. So it could, it could be, be selfless, but but still, you know what's happening. You know that a lobotomy is going to mean catatonia for him, for her. And I don't think there's any way. I can't. I can't. No. I, the agreed. more I go over the information, I just can't see that he would have known that that would have happened. I don't think he did. Correct. But I think anytime you put anyone under surgery, obviously in under anesthesia, she, like there is a risk there. Yeah. And with they knew it was a, a, a new surgery. So if you are thinking in the most extreme terms, I feel like I would at a point when I'm making my pros and cons list of do we get the surgery? Do we not? What are our options? And you're gathering all the research and just seeing what you can do about it. I think I would do that worst case scenario, best case scenario. If I do flip this coin, what's the absolute worst that can happen? And what's the absolute absolute best thing that can happen yeah and when you feel like my back is against the wall this is about as bad as it can get there's like maybe one or two things that could go worse than this the odds that I'm gonna get something worse than my situation that I'm already in are so low I'm just gonna take the risk mm -hmm. because it's like so many more good things would would happen than my situation that I'm already in Right. There the, are so few worse things than this. Yeah. You know what I mean? The odds don't feel like it feels like the odds are worth it's worth gambling the risk. Yeah, because you're already so low. It's like, well, how much do I really have to lose? How how much am I actually even gambling? Mm hmm And obviously. And they just were risk takers. They they did not shy away from taking those risks. And I think it, it does go back to like personality and mm -hmm. how they viewed people and souls and yeah. god and the religion i'm sure too they were like on their knees begging to god like please well, let this be the answer jack, yeah so. he did with jack and so i can't imagine how many times they were probably just like absolutely begging god to heal her and for this to be the answer and as like a super strict catholic i'm sure that they thought like god please this is our hail mary yeah and we don't know what they were thinking and we don't know Obviously, so like we don't know so much, but also I think it's 
It's so clear as well. Yeah, it feels like the, the most obvious explanation and the only reason I keep thinking that I should think more poorly of Joe is because of what like media has said, not actual I know. historians, not biographers, not people who have studied the ins and outs of their lives so intimately and talked to people who knew these people and JFK's biographer who literally his whole job was watching JFK interact yeah. with his family, I watching him run he... the world. And so I believe those people, if I take away all of the like fake media crap that love to Speaking just of... toy with people's lives... Speaking of, we're going to watch this later and we're going to talk about it whenever we talk about JFK's affairs. We have a whole episode dedicated to (laughs) JFK's affairs. Obviously, one of them was Marilyn Monroe. And there's this film that I think Netflix put out. And I was looking up trying to find like anything. I'm looking at everything. I literally looked up. Has anyone accused JFK of rape or sexual assault? The first few articles I see, I didn't find anything. Then I see this article about this Marilyn Monroe film coming out that said that the the hardest scene to watch was a violent depiction of JFK assaulting Marilyn. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I never knew this. I've seen several documentaries about the Kennedys and Marilyn and I've never heard anything about this like oh my gosh I and can't believe I missed this. that would this. be the headline. Yeah. yeah and me being Cassie being an Enneagram 4 wing 3 just believing. I'm like <laughs> believing I'm like, the oh lie my gosh, immediately. I can't believe I missed this. What I feel guilty that I didn't do proper research and oh my gosh I wanted to like the Kennedys so badly that I then I keep reading the, the same article and it says There has been zero accusation or evidence that Marilyn Monroe was ever sexually assaulted by the Kennedys, but it was really hard to watch. (laughs) It's a total lie, but it's a really good lie and it was super believable and it's very painful, but it didn't even actually happen. Nor was it ever rumored about, nor was it ever a thing brought up, nor did Marilyn ever accuse them, nor did anyone ever even see or hear anything like this. This this is actually another article. It's important to note that the film is not intended to be a completely true to life account. Um, Then why are we putting these ideas in people's heads? It says it just it's like the whole thing that I was talking about last episode. Why are people like gaslighting? Rosemary. Okay, well, yeah. why are people literally Why would you just show smearing? something so, 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 so evil and awful about both parties? Not only are you victimizing accusing and victimizing JFK, you are also victimizing Marilyn. And yeah. how disgusting to show that about either one of them when you have absolutely no idea of that ever be, even being a thing. And it says you're literally rewriting someone's life. And you're rewriting Marilyn's pain. Like, that's not what happened. Yeah. It says, did Blonde's Marilyn Monroe and JFK story actually happen? There is absolutely no historical evidence that John F. Kennedy sexually assaulted Marilyn Monroe, period. It appears this was an entirely fictional scene intended to make a point about the ways in which Monroe was exploited throughout her life. So okay, just using so JFK as a as a as a clickbait, uh-huh. as a drama. Headline. Watch my movie. Uh-huh. How awful and because disgusting. people hear about that and they're like, "Shut up! I didn't know that." And then they go watch it, and, and then, then they tell their friends. Make money. Like, yeah. how about let's talk about Marilyn Monroe's father? I let's know. talk about that's what I was to say. They're rewriting Marilyn's pain. That's not what happened. No, it's-, it's not what happened. And she had more autonomy and choice than that in her adult life. And that's, I feel like that's just. So you're like trapping her into wrong. Yeah, you're tra- you're trapping her in this in this victim role, and you're strong arming the Kennedys into some power wielding, abusive. It's just evil. Villain. Lying, lying it's- is evil, and and you know they know for a fact that people aren't going to go look that up. They're just going to believe, right? That that's what happened uh-huh, for sure. It's also I think it taints. The whole like Me Too movement and any sort of um, yeah. like, truth, like when there are so many lies about there, something that seem true, it's like crying wolf, like s- people just stop believing it. And eventually if, okay, someone does this over and over and over again, if 
producers and directors and like these writers keep writing lies into things, then people will just stop believing anyone. And then when a victim comes forward and it is the truth, people stop believing them because yeah, people have lied so many times in the past. Like, That's why? so harmful. It's, it's so, so harmful. harmful to like the cause and to the the victims, the, the victims, real the victims, truth, the, the truth. true victims. And Norma Jean has had so many people rumor and lie and misrepresent and steal her life from her and not tell her story and make up things about her because of headlines. And you're claiming to be representing her mm-hmm. in this. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're representing yourself. And it's just disgusting. So anyway, that is just one tiny little random thing that just happened very recently this year about the Kennedys being absolutely slaughtered in the media. There's also a whole show that has a character based around Joe Kennedy being a bootlegger. And that's also not true, proven by historians to, to be false. So it's so hard nowadays because there is just so much fake news. Hashtag fake freaking news. But that is why Cassie and I, the people that we are researching and studying, we do want to always give them the benefit of the doubt. And they are, in our minds, innocent until proven guilty. They are not guilty. And we're trying to prove them as innocent. Because hashtag democracy, (laughs) hashtag hashtag America. America. (laughs) So Cassie and I are coming into this as more so like attorneys of the people that we are studying we are not coming into this as like cops yeah we're we're like a different (laughs) we're a defense lawyer of a defense team yeah exactly and so we are putting together a case of why we think that they are sort of like innocent or to tell their truth really yeah and And what what are we basing it on we're basing it on eyewitness accounts factual events and letters 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 from from them yeah real people and and i actually and i've bought for JFK's affair episode, I've bought a tell-all from one of the women who was having an affair with JFK while he's in the White House. So I'm I'm going to hear everybody's side to the story. But. Yeah. So we're not even defense lawyers because... No, we're not even. You're right. We're not. Yeah. Because we're hearing... We are really trying to look at... Like, we are being the... We are judges. We are literally trying there to... There you go. Trying to... end la- literally last episode, we're, behind... we're not the judge. <laughs> we're not the final judge. We're banging our gavels. Like Cassie said, she she's seeing and reading these rumors and she's investigating further. She's not taking yeah. verbatim, oh, I see this one headline of blah, 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 and taking it as truth. Because she's investigating further. There are plenty of real stories about the Kennedys. You that don't are need super <laughs> sus. Yeah, you and literally don't need gossip. No. You just tell the truth. Their and life it's crazy. is so much more interesting yeah. than any of the the rumors. There's, yeah, speaking of freaking lies. The freaking doctors that basically pitched themselves. The whole 10% of people dying and like more than half of the people coming out completely out of it is a footnote in their in their reports. Just like the fact that the JFK Maryland story is complete fiction is a footnote in the that, that, article yeah. about <laughs> the TV show that you have to go look up that you... Mm-hmm. But circling back to that, does bring up another good point that Joe was paying for the best care for Rosemary throughout her whole life, but also he felt like those doctors were the best, the best. Yeah. And he was paying for the best of the best. And I don't think that you, when you're, if you're, if you're trying to be malicious and you're trying to get rid of a problem, you don't take your kid to someone who you you think is going to do a good job like that. You, if you, if you're wanting to hear something specific, you want it as quick and seamless and you don't talk to anybody and you just, you're not you're not having your daughter talk to a journalist. No. Hello, a journalist. Yeah. That's the last person that you're freaking having any of your family yeah. members talk to if you're trying to hide something. Yeah. You're not bringing attention to the fact that, oh, we're thinking about this for our kid. And if, it, if they thought it was so bad, I really don't think that they would have. No. And we'll talk Let about it be known more to the things- freaking world that they were thinking about doing yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about more things that they try to cover up later on. But, like, this is not a situation that they were trying to be secretive about whatsoever. I feel like we're just on our advocacy rant. And I want to get back to emo. Okay, but hold on. We're on Bethany's side of town and I'm uncomfortable. (laughs) And I'm like, shut up, stop talking, let me keep going. (laughs) So if you are like me and love a good um, advocacy moment, and you're like Cassie when she is not being no, No, I love advocacy. (laughs) I just don't want to preach about it. I want to... Consume. She wants to feel it. And I want to stand on my hill and die. 
<laughs> for the cause. <laughs> and Cassie wants to sit in a dark room and wallow. And cry for those people yeah. and hold Feel their hand. Feel the pain with yeah. them. But there's a documentary called Far From the Tree. It is so good. And it helps you get in the mindset of a parent having to question their parenting, essentially, and kind of like wonder what went wrong. And that's just a little bit of like how I feel like me trying to put myself in Joe and Rose's shoes after the fact, not leading up to the lobotomy of like, how did they make the decision more? So what they must've felt like afterwards. Yeah. And in it, one of the moms, like her son goes to prison and he, for murder. Yeah. He commits, that he did com- when he was young, uh, when he was a, a kid. And so as a parent, you feel like, Oh my God, what did I do wrong for my kid to end up like this? You're, you just rack your brain for what happened. What did I do? And I think that that mindset may explain why they were silent for so long afterwards. Yeah. And it does feel like they hit her afterwards because or not abandoned only her afterwards. did they make a bad decision, not only did Rosemary go through a traumatic experience, they went through a traumatic experience as well. Yeah, that's their baby. And they made a decision that they thought was right and it was completely wrong. And I can imagine the guilt the confusion the pain the like again on your knees like begging to god like what the crap happened and how how is this my life how did i become this parent that i made such a bad decision for my kid i uh, want to think that that essentially joe from that point made the best decisions that he could and he was still like that over functioning in a survival mode type situation person and he was the one visiting rosemary and trying to get his bearings on, okay, well, what does she understand now? Who is she now? What does life look like for Rosemary now? I'm the practical father. I'm the provider. What can I do to make the rest of Rosemary's life good? Because I made such a crap decision. So where do we go from here? And for Rose, why did she not show up? She did the opposite. She didn't visit her for decades afterwards. She didn't talk to her kids about it. And she claims that she didn't know. And I think that she... Because I do see Rose as such an under-functioning survival instinct type of person, I feel like she went so deep into that and she froze and almost disassociated because of the pain and the trauma that it did cause her. And it's not right and it's not fair. And I don't think that that's a good decision as a parent. And I think that obviously she shouldn't have done that and she shouldn't have abandoned her kid and she should have showed up for her and worked through that trauma faster like get yourself together your kid needs you but she didn't and well that makes that reminds me of a documentary that I have seen it's called tell me who I am it's about two twin brothers and one of them gets into an accident like a motorcycle or a yeah I think it's a motorcycle accident and he loses all of his memory so he his Slate is basically wiped clean again. He doesn't know who he is. The only thing that he remembers is that his twin brother is for sure his twin brother. And he doesn't remember any of their memories. He doesn't remember any of their life events or anything, but he trusts him and he knows this is my brother. And so because of that, he trusts him to help catch him up to where they are today and and inform him about his life and about who he is. But he's getting along and he's figuring everything out. But then he starts to find like certain photos of when they were kids. Yeah, of when they were kids and things don't really make a whole lot of sense. And he's starting to realize, I don't think we had a happy childhood full of family vacations and a white picket fence. And like, this is just like not really the things I'm finding are not adding up to the story I've been told. And spoiler alert, if you want to go watch it and not have it spoiled for you yes go watch it go watch it and jump ahead like 30 seconds yeah or 45 seconds maybe a, a minute, minute. <laughs> a minute to be um, safe. but basically the the brother who lost his memory confronts his twin and he's like i don't think you're telling me the truth what's going on and the brother who has not lost his memory says yeah you're right i definitely haven't told you the truth but i'm also not going to they go on like this for two decades them knowing that there's this secret between them they cannot be honest with each other in this area and the one who doesn't know what happened to him is he cannot move on because he feels like it's such a part of his identity he feels out of body 
And he also feels like he's lost his brother as well because he knows that there's this huge thing that is in between them that they can't talk about and the intimacy is has been shattered and the honesty that he thought that they had between them has been shattered and he can't let that go. And so he just keeps pressing his brother who knows the truth and won't tell him, says that he can't talk about it. He cannot tell him what happened because it's like reliving it. And it's a defense mechanism. And he's like, I know it's selfish, but I can't. And I won't go there. I won't do it. And I feel like Rose was the person who knew what happened in her heart of hearts, but needed so much relief from the massive pain that all she could do was deny it to herself and everyone around her. And she could not talk about it whatsoever. And so what she ended up doing was lying to her children, blaming it all on Joe, not taking responsibility she Eunice said that she didn't know what happened to Rosemary, who was her best friend and her closest sibling for a decade. Like she knew she was missing and something happened, but she didn't know what, what right. or why or any of the details at all. So you, there can be this dynamic where we're so close. Rose literally moved across the country to go live with Eunice when she is depressed and destroyed over the disappearance of Rosemary and the not knowing what happened. And Eunice is just this like random middle kid (laughs) in the middle of the Kennedy siblings who is super independent, is completely capable to be on her own, is intelligent, is strong. She didn't need her mom in a normal situation and she would have been fine without her mom even in this depression and this in this questioning season but Rose did love her kids and she knew Eunice needs me more than anyone right now she left the rest of her kids on the east coast moves to Stanford to be with Eunice and yet still she cannot go there herself and so she is taking care of Eunice every day they're super close but they don't talk about it and and I'm sure Eunice was asking her like probably every freaking day yeah what is going on what happened I know something happened to my big sister but Eunice also decides this relationship is important enough to me that we can still go on Mm -hmm. even in the lying and the dishonesty and the trauma Mm mm-hmm they both and and Rose can go on with these questions all the time. They need each other enough that they won't abandon the relationship. But there's also this barrier in between them. They're like locked in that. And so I feel like that has to happen all the time because there are so many personalities whenever you go through something traumatic that they just deny to themselves deny, and deny, deny, deny. and that didn't happen. And I've heard people talk about this as well with personal experiences with trauma tell me basically that like I the way that they viewed themselves in order to keep that picture yeah of who they are intact and and the reality that they've lived in for their whole life intact Rose I'm a wonderful mother I'm a protective mother I do everything for my yeah my duty is to my kids uh my biggest calling in life that I feel like was literally given to me by God Mm -hmm. is to be a good mom and And in order to accept the lobotomy as what it was, would shatter the idea of who she was, but also the idea of who she was in this world, like her entire identity, her Her reality. Her world schema. Yeah, would have to be shattered. Uh, It's like a paradigm shift almost. Mm -hmm. And obviously the healthy thing to do would be- Go through it. Yes, you go through it. It's, we have to go through, face head on these hard things, but- we're also human and our brain sometimes like that survival mode does take over and it's not the natural thing to fight against that. It does take the extra effort and the extra work. And and I think a rose did get there eventually. It just took her yeah. decades. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, I don't believe that that's right as a parent, but parents are screw ups. They're humans. <laughs> that would be if it was like an unconscious decision to survive that way. Or she consciously thought in order to be a parent to my other eight yeah. children who are still there and do still need me, I can't process it. Process it. I can't go through that because that's going to take me. That is such a mountain that I can't climb right now and still be a mom. I would have to like mm-hmm. go away for a year and yeah. abandon my other remaining kids in order to process this. It's like, And she felt like I can't do that. So she made the best decision she thought she could at the time. Let's just reiterate how 
we absolutely know there is just no, is it just impossible for Rose to not have known exactly what freaking happened? So I guess this is the conspiracy of the week, which is not even a conspiracy. It's, it's a just... conspiracy that we're bringing to the table as a theory that is most likely the truth. <laughs> and now to ensure that you stay well fed, here is your conspiracy of the week. As for Rose's story about not knowing what happened to my daughter for 20 years. That's what pisses me off about it, I it's think. It's all Joe's fault. Yeah. Okay, there goes my voice. <laughs> That's what makes me so mad about it is not that she, okay, she denied it to herself. Like, that really does make me mad also. But I understand where people are coming from when they do stuff like that. When they can't talk about stuff, when they can't tell the truth. I raise one eyebrow and I move on. The fact that she freaking throws Joe completely under the bus and blames it all on him and basically abandons him in that responsibility of something so horrible and awful is not not just to their family, to the world, to the world that throws him under the bus. She hung him out to dry in the hot sun. And when you zoom in and look at, okay, what is their daily life like? What, who is the one who's responsible for Rosemary? Because Rose Turn, turns out she thinks it's Joe. That's the one that's responsible for Rosemary. Even though she's the one having lunches with camp counselors and corresponding with, I mean, they, they both corresponded with her teachers and stuff, but very much Rose. And, and if you want to be sterile about it and if you want to go be cold and you look at their agreement at the beginning of their marriage, mm-hmm. when they first started having kids, what did Rose and Joe decide? That we would separate them and group them by gender and I would be in charge of the girls and Joe was in charge of the boys well Rose if you're in charge of the girls and And we know you were advocating for Rosemary all the time you were trying to find her placements you were trying to solve the problem right up until the event yeah Rosemary Rose was not a bring them to the bosom type of mother except for the case of of Rosemary. Rosemary she loved Rosemary so much and Eunice saying they, she never played tennis with anyone, but she played every freaking day for hours and hours with Rosemary. There is no way in the world that her daughter just disappears and she doesn't question it and she just lets her go with no explanation. Absolutely not. <laughs> with the whole kick thing, there's no way that Rose was not stupid. Exactly. <laughs> and she also wasn't a total doormat. No, uh, she knew what was going on. She had tabs on everything. She had file folders. Yeah, she was Manila a manager. Envelopes. She was an she was an organizer. She was a fighter. She was independent. And there's just no way that she didn't get to the bottom of that like in a day. Which actually makes it more suspicious that she made the decision with Joe because you could just be like, he freaking went and did it, and I was pissed off. Then you don't have any responsibility, right? I told him not to, and he still did. Right. Then it really makes Joe look bad. Exactly. But instead you're like, I had no clue for two decades. I was stumbling around in the dark. That's the story you tell if you are guilty. Yeah. It's just like a bad lie. That is us throwing Rose under the bus. But in Rose's defense and my claim against the theory that Rose and Joe knew what a lobotomy was and still had this procedure done to the daughter... Rose didn't even look at Rosemary like there was something wrong with her. They di- she didn't look at Rosemary and see just a, a quote unquote retarded child. She didn't see someone who needed to be sent away to a institution. No, I mean, she definitely acknowledged that she wishes that Rosemary didn't have these problems and that they could educate her out of it and help her excel but it wasn't that rosemary inherently was damaged she didn't believe that or that rosemary didn't exist for a reason or that rosemary should have never been born she thought it was a divine plan and god gave her rosemary for a reason she for believed, a lesson for a responsibility for an understanding for perspective mm-hmm. yeah she 
put a lot of weight in who Rosemary was and what Rosemary brought to the table. So I just don't believe that. Like, again, that's just like another, not nail in the coffin, but another reason why I just don't believe that they just knew what a lobotomy was and just got her lobotomized and like did they didn't think about it or if that was for selfish reasons of like, we don't want to deal with this problem anymore. They I didn't just see her as a problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's those things. And then every single time I think about it, I'm just like, factually, they could not have known what a lobotomy was. They could not have known. Unless they have like some insider information because the doctors were lying on paper. Right. Saying that it literally would be better for Rosemary and that she would come out more joyful. Yeah. And, and they were problems. like the only sources of information. Uh, they had the reporter saying that, but like, who, I don't know that Joe's going to trust a reporter over a medical doctor. I'm trying to be the, like the devil's advocate and think, okay, well, they were, they did have the network, the connections. They did have the education to like, get insider information but like and okay then you think of what's the motive to get this insider information of what a lobotomy is and that this will do away with the whole problem of rosemary yeah then why would they have spent their entire lives putting rosemary out there Yes. In the public eye, they never even thought of sending her away for good. They never even thought of disowning her. Even that simple fact right there of why wouldn't they have just, if they wanted to get rid of the problem, if they wanted to close the case, why wouldn't they have just sent her away as they were expected to do? As was the advice of the experts of the day. Right. And why wouldn't they have just washed their hands of it and walked away? They made a an active conscious tr- like a choice, an attempt to to help her and to keep her in their lives. They they weren't making that as a passive get rid of her decision. That wasn't the passive get rid of her decision. There were much easier ways to get rid of her. That, that, that one was an that, attempt to solve the actual pain of her, like pain that rosemary carried not to walk away right and that was the riskier decision on their end that was taking the risk that this might look bad on us if if joe did think okay worst case scenario worst case scenario this goes terribly wrong my daughter is i basically kill my daughter and that looks really bad on a parent yeah the Worst case scenario for shipping her off to an institution. I explain that away with that's what everyone does because in my 2022 brain, in my modern day knowledge, with my modern day knowledge, I would think, oh, well, they wouldn't send her away to an institution because they would be found out. Someone would leak it to the press and the press would go with this big story of the Kennedys, which is the story now. <laughs> the, kid, yeah. the Kennedys disowned their daughter and hid her away in some off. horrible institution but back then that was the thing that you were supposed to do that's what that's the thing that all the richest most responsible most educated people did with their loved ones with disabilities i mean it, there are a million different like scenarios but every rabbit trail that we follow there's it, always there's yes, always a dead it, end of oh it just kidding just kidding yeah it always leads to oh they did love her they mm-hmm. did because that was not the easy decision that was not the simplest that was not the smoothest option. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At the time. It's like they were in a panic situation. They made a rash decision maybe, or even not a rash decision, just a an, a decision out of desperation. A desperate, yeah, yeah, a desperate, a desperate decision. decision. There you go. And life still went on for everybody else. And we also have to talk about the time period. That brings up 1941. <laughs> the world is catching on fire. Everything is burning to the ground. World War II is storming the beaches of your country. Joe had a responsibility to... As the ambassador. As the ambassador to both U.S. and Great Britain. And we will talk about that in the next episode. But the World War was not just, oh, this like global things happening. Like the Kennedy family was involved in World War II. <laughs> like major global decisions, like life altering decisions. And for hundreds and thousands of people, Joe Jr. is already enrolled in the military. You just have to remember they were in the thick of it that the Kennedys had lots of things going on all the time, like maximum pressure too. all the time. So they all come to Palm Beach. I think it's Palm Beach, not Palm Springs. The family vacation home. They come there for Christmas. They either talk about it or they don't talk about it. And then they immediately days after Christmas disperse and they are all 
doing things that are important. They're all fighting for their country, serving in the Red Cross, going to school. I can't figure out if the Kennedys told them at Christmas and told them, we're not talking about this. That's why she's not in the letters. That's why the younger kids didn't know anything, you know, just for the family, just for the younger kids' mental health, for for our mental health as Joe and Rose. Please, we're not going to talk about this. But Something this horrible is, happened. This is what happened. Yeah, this is what happened. And I'm not talking about it again. Don't bring it back up. Or they didn't even think it was that weird because I Hot. need to drink water. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I'm literally oh, just you don't like, even have one. No, that's why I'm like. And I don't even know if they would have thought it was that weird because we know that from previous letters and research that boarding schools that Rosemary was a part of and did attend said don't come like they didn't want the family to come visit, but they also didn't want Rosemary going to visit her family because it would be disruptive to their education. So it really wouldn't be that weird if if Rose and Joe just told them oh, she can't come home for the holidays because she's really trying to be educated. So that is one situation, one plausible scenario. Well, kind of two, because one of them would be they didn't tell them anything. They were just like, oh, she's away at school, whatever. It's all normal. Or they told them this is what happened. Don't bring it up again. And then they begged for mercy and forgiveness and grace. You know what I mean? But that would have only been to Joe Jr., Jack and Kick. We don't because we know that Eunice didn't know for a decade. Mm -hmm. So if they did talk to the oldest. Which makes sense because, well, the younger kids, why would you tell them? Yeah. The older kids would normally include Eunice, except for they knew that Eunice was not going to let it go. And she was way closer to Rosemary than anybody else. And she was, she seems very advocacy minded as well and, and for justice. Obviously. And her whole life's work. And I think they just knew their kids and they were like, we can't tell you this right now. We've got to like come to terms with it on our own and then we'll have to have the tough conversation with her later. But she's not going to go quietly. Yeah. You know either I mean? that, like selfishly, I need a moment before I talk to Eunice about it. Or, or this is absolutely so horrific her. and painful. Like she may never come back from this and she's in college. Mm-hmm. I don't want to destroy she's, her entire right. future need- because of this one thing. Uh, obviously, that's not the decision I would make. Like, I would want you to know that what's happening to your best friend and your sister. Yeah. But but they might have thought, you need to go and create your own life first. And then when we feel like you're, you're, stable. Ma- you're mature enough, you're stable enough, we'll have the conversation because you can't do anything about it now. Right. I can't let this take two of my kids. It's already taken one of my children. I'm not going to let it take down another. Which brings me to another very plausible storyline. I think that if if you're really putting yourself in 1941, you're Joe Kennedy. You've taken your daughter to get this brain surgery, this p- procedure that you thought was going to be a miracle cure for her. And the doctors completely, all you know is that they botched it. I don't even know if he knew how risky it was. He just knew it went badly. Right, that all lobotomies are bad. No, I think that he, yeah, maybe just thought her this procedure in, spe- in particular. Yeah. There was a freak accident kind of a thing. Big complication. And you go and visit your daughter after this procedure. She does not recognize you at all. She is not responding to anything. She's basically looks like she's not there. And the doctors are telling you she's not there. Some It went bad and it's bad. She's gone. Yeah, she is unresponsive. She, she doesn't, doesn't know, know that you're you here. Are. She doesn't know who you are. She doesn't know who she is or or her past at all. Or she is, is upset by you. Yes. She's very, very emotional now. And because she doesn't know who you are, or maybe she like kind of knows who you are, but it's very upsetting to her. And you are making her existence worse. You're You're upsetting her. Yeah. All you do when you come visit her is upset her and make her have an outburst and an emo- give her an emotional reaction that is not positive. Either one of those scenarios, she doesn't know you or she knows you and it's not a good situation. And you're making it worse on her. You're hurting your, her. Your presence is painful for her. I can see where Joe would have made the decision. I'm going to check up on her. I'm going to pay for the best care I can. I could ever even invent or dream of. He had more money than he could even like there wasn't enough care in the world for his amount of money. Like right. he could afford anything. And he did pay for the best 
of anything I could ever think of. Right. That existed at that time. Yeah. So he's thinking, I'm doing right by her. I'm taking care of her. I'm making sure she is still my daughter. But my wife will be destroyed by this. It is not helping my daughter. The doctors have told me this and I've seen it with my own eyes. She's not there anymore. We're going to check up on her from afar and we are going to minimize the damage. Yeah, I can see him as a as a father and as a husband decide that what these doctors are telling me or what I'm witnessing with my own eyes when I have visited her right after the surgery, that it doesn't make sense to drown the rest of my family with this when it's not even helping Rosemary. Mm-hmm. And I and I do think that right after her surgery, she was in a very different state, obviously, than when she was transferred from Craig House to the Wisconsin nunnery. And then we know for a fact that when she got to the Wisconsin nunnery, she was very upset, very worried about not measuring up to her siblings, all that. And then by the end of her life was finally at peace, had more understanding. So when he, when Joe's making these initial decisions it really was a different Rosemary. There are so many different possibilities, things that are plausible. And the thing that I keep coming back to is every time I isolate, okay, but this is weird. Like, how can they not have known what happened? Or why would they abandon her afterwards? That they didn't write any letters about her and they didn't visit her and they didn't do all these things. But then when I like, okay, let me think about why that would be. What I possibly like could explain this? It, that is from a loving place. I always can think of something. I'm like, oh, well, that kind of would make sense. Or like, I would get there. Yeah, that's or, not so far-fetched. Yeah, maybe it's not my opinion or decision, but I could see how someone who loves someone would make that decision. Mm-hmm. Every single thing. Everything at a bird's eye view, all the headlines that we know from the story sound so black and white, horrible, extreme. Cruel. Cruel. They all sound so extreme. And then you get down to the ground level from the point of view that these decisions were made and every single thing makes sense. We don't have hindsight while we're in it. And we also have emotions that cloud judgment. And we do get in these panicky, frantic states. Uh And so when you add all of those layers and, and you think about how humans actually react to things and how humans do handle situations. It is not a point blank black and white situation that they just didn't love Rosemary. They threw her away. They abused her. That's not the story. Mm -mm. And could those things have happened? Maybe. But there's so many other explanations. I also feel like most of the time these crazy headlines about anyone, you want to look at it because it's not the norm. And that's why people love true crime and serial killers. Right. It's fascinating because that's not how most people operate. And the Kennedys, although they weren't most people, they were not so extreme. Like they were not sociopaths. They were normal people. And yeah. the details are not that interesting with the lobotomy. Like you yeah. want it to be this evil, conniving, powerful right. family that was at the top of America. And they hid this daughter. That were sh- ashamed of their. The secret child who yeah. they wanted to do away with her. It's not that crazy. It's it's a lot just more it's a lot more normal of a situation. People want a good story and it's just it's not. It's painful and it's sad mm-hmm. in and of itself, but the details are more mundane than people want them to be. And I think that happens a lot with the Kennedys. On both sides too, people glorify them and put them on this crazy pedestal, yes. but they also villainize them and want to think that they're this evil entity that they're just not join us here next week to hear kfm 4 part two thank you all for listening to today's episode if you enjoyed it please give us a review on apple rate us on spotify and share blood and business with a friend or a sibling if you'd like to support the show the best way is to become a patron of blood and business You will get bonus content every month, including a monthly bonus episode, interactive main episodes, and behind-the-scenes footage. To keep up with us day-to-day, you can follow us at Blood & Business on Instagram and TikTok. You can find the link for Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon in the show notes below. Thank you so much for the support, and we will see you back here next week for your regularly scheduled programming on 
blood and business.